How do you go about robbing a bank from the comfort of your own living room? Well, these thieves are just about to do that, and they do it courtesy of an online advert. If you're unlucky enough to be in the USA and happen to type in certain keywords on some search engines, you'll end up not on Citibank's login, but on a fake web page devised by thieves. And if you called that number, you'd be speaking to one of these guys. Hello there. Thank you for calling Citibank. This is Chester. How can I help you? Yes, I'd like to report um, a a blockage on my account. This group of thieves have paid others so that their advert appears high up on the list of search results and therefore people can accidentally click their ad instead of the real Citibank login page. This type of scam is known as the Search Engine Optimization Scam or SEO Scam. If I go down to my bank tomorrow, will they unblock it? Will unblock it or what? Basically, ma'am. Basically, uh, as you know, this is the security department for online. So basically, ma'am, you do not have. Pardon. To... Can you hear me, ma'am? I I can hear you. I just I, I get with your accent, it's a little hard for me to understand totally. His accent is a little hard to understand because he's not from America. But this call has been diverted to a few people who operate in India. In fact, they're operating in a small room which holds just three people in the city of Srinagar. It's not their hometown and it's unclear why they moved to this location to run the scams. And the scammers have a line for everything. Here, one prospective victim has noticed that if she accesses the real Citibank login, she can in fact log in properly. got into the um, Google Chrome and I got into the Citibank. Yeah, because I have allowed... Uh, that uh, for one hour uh, allowance so it is for one hour after one hour it will be locked again so we have to fix that out all right so are you there in computer oh I can be just a minute yeah just uh, turn on the computer okay just a minute As always, to steal money from their victims, they require the victim to download remote access software and then they'll ask them to log in to their bank accounts. They will then attempt to blacken the victim's screen and transfer money through wire transfers from their online accounts. If you take anything away from these videos, it's be suspicious if you see something unusual on a bank page. Real bank security staff will never ask for personal information or pins. Okay, I'm on. Just open your Google Chrome. Uh-huh. Just you need to type over there. Uh-huh. W W W dot Yeah, www dot what? It's anydesk.com. Okay. When his victim has downloaded and installed AnyDesk, the first thing he'll ask them to do is log in to their Citibank account to work out just how much money he can get away with. Now type the user ID. Okay, I'd rather not give you my password. Uh and whenever you type your ID or especially when you type your password, it comes like a dot, dot, dot. You don't even see your password. So like... But uh, do, you, do you see my password? How can I see that? When you type it, you cannot even see that. It comes like a dot, dot, dot. All right. Okay. Sign in. Yeah, click on sign on. Okay, I'm in the account. Okay, you are on your credit card account. Hold on. But thankfully, some people get very suspicious, especially as a lot of their phone calls tend to drop out a lot. This call does drop out, and whenever Nadim rings the victim again, she's very suspicious. I don't understand that. Are you, are you, I don't understand all of this. How come it's locked me out in the first place and why am I having to go through a whole bunch of stuff to get back on? I mean, I'm I'm afraid that there's a problem here. We'll check it out. I'm going to tell you each and everything. The victim hangs up, but Nadim insists on calling her again. I'm sorry, but I'm not continuing with this until I check it out. Thank you. Then your bank account get locked, ma'am. Would you stop calling me until I then your bank account get locked? Your bank account get locked. Your bank account get locked, and you lose all the money from your Chase Bank and from your Citibank as well. Oh, that's baloney. Thank you. 
But sadly, there are those who do believe that he's Citibank security. Nadim will distract his victim by getting them to write down on a piece of paper a very long reference number, but this is just a distraction technique while he attempts to send money, usually to a mule in Thailand. Okay, this is getting to be a long number, okay. Then one six one zero. One six one zero. This is a view of the victim's PC, which has been black screened and the deem is controlling. Three seven seven. Three seven seven. Then O A N. Four A N. Yeah, four A N. K H A. Nadim is just making up this reference and even uses some of the letters of the name of the recipient of this money. Yeah, then 977. Seven. Oh, this is crazy. 977. Seven. Make sure you have it correctly and can you please slowly, slowly repeat that back to me? Yes. C O M 5 5. So while the victim is reading out this extremely long reference number, Nadim is sending money to a mule in Thailand. Thai banks seem to be used by Indian scammers quite frequently. I don't know why this is, but perhaps it's to do with the easy setup of these accounts, or maybe that two-factor authentication isn't always required. And sir, uh, you are getting a text message in your mobile phone. The mobile phone ending with 2358. This is your mobile phone, right? And this is why you should never read out security information to anyone. The money transfer can't happen unless Nadim has this number. Oh, 484241. 484241? That's what I got here, yeah. 484241. And with one PE successfully set up, Nadim tries to add a few more. One of them includes his wife. But as Nadim attempts to send her $30,000, Citibank have noticed the unusual wire transfers. They call him on his landline and ask him what might be going on. For the last hour I've been on the phone with people who said that there, uh, someone had tried to take some money out of my account and they're setting me up with this work surely thing. And... Uh, They've given me some account numbers and stuff that are running 15 or 20 digits. And I just want to know, is this through Citibank? But he's confused whether the first or second callers are the real Citibank employees. Sir, where are you talking, sir? Are you talking to me? Yeah, somebody's, somebody was trying to get 30000 It wasn't me. But but still confused, he asked the scammers which phone call he should be listening to. They didn't take that money out. I'm just trying to find out if these people are the people that are working for you and me. Oh my goodness, sir, you doubt us. I think I have them on the phone right now. They said that they had already, I guess, cancelled it. Hold on a sec. And he drops the legitimate phone call. They said that there had been two attempts, uh... I guess to withdraw $30,000 and are you there? Sir, I am telling you to hang up that call. What are you doing, sir? Okay, I'm checking with them. I wanted to make sure you guys were legit. Sir, I told you there were attempts. You saw, they told you <coughs> that there were attempts. You don't need to do anything. We are canceling everything. You need to disconnect the call and talk to me right now. Because, sir, I'm we can see some more transaction happening. So, James, if you ignore this call, and if you talk to me about the legitimacy, you will be in a lot of trouble. So disconnect the call and come over to this call right now. That's what I did. And did you disconnect that call? Yeah. Now, James, you need to provide me with your account number right now. But once they have a victim, they will try every method they know to try and transfer money out of their bank account. Not only did they try two international wire transfers, but they also tried a domestic one and a wire transfer internationally for a lower amount. Even while all these wire transfers were in progress, they still attempted to get yet more money out of the victim, and they looked through the list of passwords stored in his browser. 
They spotted that James had a Western Union account and that's like gold dust for scammers. So they lost absolutely no time logging into the account without James' knowledge and Nadim sent his wife $800. But how do I know that this was Nadim's wife? After all, it could have been an innocent stranger or someone who was caught up in a scam without their knowledge. Well, it so happened that I had full access to Nadim's PC and on that PC were some very revealing files. Among those files were three boarding passes, all bought by the same person, all sitting next to one another, so it's likely that these were the names of the other two scammers alongside Nadim. But the most revealing file of all was a wedding video. It showed me a very clear view of what Nadim looked like because his webcam wasn't that good and they were in a pretty dimly lit room. And it also revealed that his bride was called Rukshar. And it seems they were married in December 2020. It even had a photo of his mother and his home address. I'm sure she'd be so proud of him. But how did I manage to get all of this information and access this scammer's PC? Well, it was all down to Janny. He works my friends and fellow YouTube scam baiters, Trilogy Media. Janny's an ex-scammer who almost died trying to expose the scams that he was caught up in. He now actively works against scammers. Click the link if you want to hear his story. So thanks to Janny and Trilogy Media, I was able to watch these three scammers go about their business. And sometimes they would be called by people who had had money stolen. But of course, all they did was taunt their victims. Oh, I'll, I'll put the money back into your wife's account. You ass- we got the money. We'll spend the money on hookers and cocaine, mother... And made a mute child. So as you'd expect, there's absolutely no sympathy for any of their victims. And it made me even more determined to disrupt their scams. You're looking at scam victim Nancy's PC as she's pleading with Nadim to get off her computer. I'm removing that. Ma'am, I'm removing. He's adding a recipient to your Citibank account. Ma'am, oh, right okay, now. let me show you on the next page what you see. You told me you see that everything is removed or not. Just you let me know. I'm not going to uh, tell you. Okay. I- I'll okay. show you. Get out. I- I'll okay. show you. Get out of, first of all, get out of my computer right now. You want me? Okay. You so uh, get so, out of the, my computer right now. So you don't want me to no, remove? Don't do that. You don't want me to remove don't that? Don't do that. You you don't want? Don't do that. You ma'am, you don't want me to remove that, or you want me to remove the account? <laughs> Tell me that. But despite hanging up on Nadim, what Nancy didn't realize is that any desk gave him immediate remote access once again, and as he blackened her screen, he tried to add recipients once again without her knowledge. So I had to call Nancy very quickly to get her to switch off her computer. Hello? Hello. Um, sorry, my name's Jim Brown. I'm calling you because somebody has access to your computer and they're trying to send a scammer some money. Does that make sense to you? you need, oh, no. You no. need to yes. sw- you need There's to- a frog. I tried to get into the... Uh- Yep. Uh, I tried to call the uh, bank. Yep. You need to turn off your computer it. immediately, otherwise he'll succeed in doing this. Hold the power switch oh, down. No. Turn it off quickly, please. Yeah, I because I'm not home right now. I'm going to call my husband oh, okay. to turn the computer okay. off. Yeah, okay. All right. No problem. I'll ring oh. you back. Okay, no problem. Bye. At least I was able to warn that particular victim, but the next account that Nadim had access to was a huge business account. It had more than $200,000 in the Wells Fargo account and the Dean was going to try everything in his book to get all of that money. And despite calling the business owner multiple times, I could never get in touch with him. Yet I could see Nadim repeatedly try to move money out of this business's Wells Fargo account. I could see Nadim accessing his victim's PC and checking that the coast was clear by turning on the webcam. Cheekily, I even watched Nadim take a note of what was written on a post-it note in front of the computer. He tried this as a password for various accounts. Someone needed to call at his door to warn him to remove any desk. And that someone would be Trilogy Media. The guys in Trilogy are very used to warning victims about being in the middle of a scam. But let's just say this particular one didn't quite go according to plan. I've left a link in the top right where you can see them trying to warn this particular victim about Nadim. 
it doesn't quite go to plan. I believe that he, um, he's, uh, someone is trying to steal from him. We are, we are independent journalists and we have been tracking scammers and there's a scammer that's trying to steal. If you haven't yet subscribed to Trilogy Media, show them your love and hit the subscribe button on their channel. It's also in the description. Yeah, but can, it's important and something... It's, he's in danger, I'm just trying to help. We're not here to do anything bad, we're looking for Raj, that's it. Can you call him, at least we can explain, can you call him? Can we leave a message for him? Can we leave a message? Please check out Trilogy Media's version of this video. The link is in the description. So I leave you with another clip of Nadim's wedding. We can all wonder where exactly he got the money from to afford such a lavish wedding and such a nice suit. And finally, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who watches my videos on YouTube. You'll notice that I don't get sponsorship, but there is a way that you can support me. There's extra content available on Patreon.com, so join me there if you can. I'm also on Twitter at Jim Browning 11 or if you just fancy buying me a coffee, there's a link on screen and in the description. Thanks again.